What is up guys, David here, and behind me is a car you might remember. This was actually the Paxton Coyote 5.0 I reviewed not too long ago. When I reviewed this car, it was around 580 wheel horsepower. But now it has 700 something horsepower, with one difference. How did that happen? How does this car go from 580 wheel horsepower to 700? And that is the magic of a fuel called E85. So E85, the magical corn gasoline and kind of known as poor man's race gas. So before we start talking about the magical race gas, let's talk about what's different about this car. This car actually had stock everything. It, and it could have kept going with stock everything. However, Cody, did a pretty smart thing and replaced the clutch just in case. It's an RST twin disc in it now and it feels fantastic. But other than that, stock motor, stock intake manifold with a Paxton supercharger on it. Yeah, we'll do a little hit. <laughs> I'm starting to love the corn already. E85 or ethanol is 85% denatured ethanol fuel and 15% gasoline. It's used by most flex fuel vehicles from sports cars to your suburban. It mostly comes from corn and nature. The higher the octane rating, the greater the power advantages, usually between 100 and 105. Genius and complete supercar badass Christian von Koenigsegg popularized it with his CCXR. The flex fuel systems in Koenigseggs have moved on to the Agera as well. E85 is actually the most popular in the Midwest for obvious reasons. We have tons of farming and tons of land, which means corn. When you change the E85, it's not like your car completely changes its character. Its power band, if tuned correctly, should feel the same, just faster. It should feel linear and it should feel predictable when you change to the E85. It does have a higher fuel flow rate required to burn, however. It requires proper seals, fuel lines, and injectors. So you will need to change your injectors if you plan on converting to E85. It is also much cheaper than conventional gasoline. Some downsides of E85. Your gas mileage is not good anymore at all. Like, it's pretty terrible. This car went from 30 miles to the gallon on the highway to 14. That's cutting that sucker in half. That is insane. But because race car. E85 sees the biggest gains, however, in boosted cars. I'm talking your Evos, your STIs, your Supras. But don't forget about American Muscle too. Both sides of the spectrum use it. E85 also doesn't really play well with cars with direct injection. C16 is an alternative race fuel. However, E85 is mind-blowingly cheaper for sometimes almost the same results. One big argument against E85 is that it's really not friendly in cold places. For example, I know a lot of people who live in Detroit and they'll have a summer tune for E85 and a winter tune for normal gasoline. That is because sometimes E85 can get really gunked up. So you have to be careful in the conditions you use it.
appreciate you coming to watch this quick little lesson in E85. It's a very interesting topic when it comes to performance cars. I want to thank you guys for watching once again, and I hope you learned something. Have a fantastic day. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.